Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming. I'm Tamar Kessel. I'm relatively new to ONS, and today I'll be discussing visco supplementation. So, just as a background, uh, first line treatment for osteoarthritis of any joint really aims to uh, decrease or relieve pain. And normally we do this with uh, trying pain relievers such as ibuprofen or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, along with physical therapy, which we just heard about, application of topical analgesic, as well as possibly even an injection of corticosteroid. However, some people, they might have bad reaction to non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, and usually these medicines really only be, uh, bring temporary relief. So what about when first line therapy fails? So we try the non-steroidals, we try physical therapy, maybe even a corticosteroid shot, and the person's really not responding. Uh, we do have the option of visco supplementation. And this is an injection of a preparation of hyaluronic acid into a joint. So hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring substance found in the synovial fluid, and it acts as a lubricant to enable bones to move smoothly over each other, as well as a shock absorber for joint loads. So if we see the picture down on the bottom, that's the chemical formula of hyaluronic acid. It's pretty much just a sugar polymer. And at room temperature, you can see it's a very kind of viscous gel-like substance. So why do we think this should work? Uh, we do know that people with osteoarthritis or wear and tear arthritis have a lower than normal concentration of hyaluronic acid in their joints. So visco supplementation might be a therapeutic option for certain individuals with osteoarthritis of certain joints. So what are the effects of visco supplementation? Um, it has been shown to relieve pain in many patients who don't get relief from non-medicinal measures or analgesic drugs, so the people that didn't maybe respond to non-steroidals or the physical mm -hmm. therapy. Um, it's been used in Europe and Asia for many years, but the FDA didn't approve it until 1997 for use in the United States, and at that time it was really only approved to treat uh, osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, we do have several preparations of hyaluronic acid currently uh, commercially available on the market. So if we look here in this chart, you can see that we have many options available currently on the market. So we have Uflexo, we have Hylogan, Orthovis, Suparts, we have Synvisc 1, Synvisc, and these are all kind of, they have different preparations of the hyaluronic acid and uh, different numbers of injections. So if we look at Uflexa, that's a 1% sodium hyaluronate. It's a 20 milligram once a week injection for a total of three injections. Versus Hylogan is sodium hyaluronate, also 20 milligrams, but this one is for a total of five injections. We have Orthovisc, which is a high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, and this is 30 milligrams once a week for a total of three to four. Uh, Suparts is a 10 milligram once a week for a total of five. And then Synvisc, you can see, has two options. So we have Synvisc 1 and the regular Synvisc. The Synvisc 1, that's a very large volume, so it's a 48 milligram one-time injection versus the other Synvisc is 16 milligrams once a week for a total of three. So with all the options out there, which do we choose? Uh, if you look at the literature available right now, there's really lack of evidence that any one brand of visco supplementation is superior to another brand. There's also lack of study that people who fail to respond to one brand will respond to another brand. So really what it comes down to is really personal preference, cost, and total number of visits. So how do we administer these uh, injections? So patient comes in, first thing you should do, obviously, is you examine the knee. You look for any erythema, look for any warmth, edema. Obviously, if there's a sign of infection, that would be a contraindication to do the injection. Um, if there's any effusion or swelling, you want to aspirate that before you do the injection. And that can usually be done at the same time with only one needle injected into the joint. So you first would place the needle, you would aspirate out all the fluid that you can, leave the needle in, just switch the syringe, and then inject the hyaluronic acid. And depending on the product you choose to use, patient will need anywhere from really the one with the Synvisc 1 to five injections over several weeks. So what are the uh, immediate effects? We know that uh, hyaluronic acid really doesn't have any immediate pain relieving effect. Uh, patients can't even notice a local reaction such as pain, warmth, or even slight swelling immediately after the injection. But usually these symptoms, they're short-lived, usually shouldn't last long. And if you tell people to apply ice after the injection, that can help to decrease the local pain or the local swelling. 
You should also tell patients for the first 48 hours following the ejection, they should really avoid excessive weight bearing on the leg. So really no prolonged standing, jogging, or heavy lifting for the first 48 hours following. What are some of the longer term effects? Uh, over the course of injections, patients may notice that they have less pain in their knees. Um, it does seem to have an anti-inflammatory and pain relieving properties. Uh, we know that um, we think that hyaluronic acid may even stimulate the body to produce more of its own hyaluronic acid, and these effects can last for several months. So studies show even that the uh, pain relief could last anywhere from six months to a year. So what about visco supplementation use beyond knees? Um, currently, it's really considered experimental and investigational uh, for other indications. So things like facet joint arthropathy, osteochondritis desiccans, patellofemoral syndrome, all considered experimental. Um, also ex considered experimental and investigational for joints other than the knee. So use in ankle joint, carpal metacarpal, elbow joint, hip, metatarsophalangeal, shoulder, temple mandibular joint, all investigational at this time. But people have been trying it for other indications, they're trying it for other joints, and if we look at the data out there currently, we're seeing some positive trends or positive results for its use in hip joint, ankle joint, carpal metacarpal, shoulder, and the metatarsophalangeal joint. Uh, studies that don't look as great, we're not seeing as positive trends, include the elbow joint and the uh, facet joints, and really inconclusive trends so far is the tempo mandibular joint. So in summary, uh, visco supplementation can be helpful for people whose arthritis has not responded to basic treatment. So you know, they tried the course of physical therapy, tried the non-steroidals, maybe even the steroid injection and didn't get great results. Um, it's most effective if the arthritis is in the early stage. So mild to moderate arthritis has been shown to respond better than severe arthritis. Um, some patients may feel pain at the injection site and occasionally injection can result in increased swelling. Uh, just anecdotally, I've seen that increased swelling more with the larger volume, so kind of the synvisc one, one time more than the three to five injections. And uh, long-term efficacy of visco supplementation is not yet known and research continues in this area. Thank you.